So my name is Christina Temis. I'm going to be presenting some work that I've done with my colleagues, um, Dr. Zanarini, and her lab at um, McLean Hospital, the Laboratory of, for the Study of Adult Development. Um, and I'll be speaking about um, some of the more guarded outcomes that Dr. Zanarini referenced in her talk yesterday. Um, specifically, I'll be touching on deaths by suicide, but also other causes over 24 years of prospective follow-up. Um, so as I'm sure everyone is aware, suicide is often um, a dangerous outcome associated with BPD and one that's been widely studied. Um, and different types of samples have found different prevalence estimates for completed suicide in BPD. Um, a follow-back study by um, Joel Paris and colleagues found over 27 years up to 10% of people completed suicide. Um, some of the estimates uh, from other studies have ranged from the lower end of 3% up until about 10%, and some meta-analytic studies sort of sway towards the upper end of that band. Um, that being said, there are relatively few studies examining the predictors of completed suicide in BPD. Um, for one, it's a hard, it's a relatively rare outcome, even, um, you know, with the 10% estimate, so it's a hard thing to do. Um, and most studies have focused on predictors of suicide attempts and gestures, which are also important outcomes, but some studies have indicated may be qualitatively different than actually uh, completed suicide. Um, the studies that have looked at completed suicide in BPD, and a lot of these are um, sort of follow-back studies or psychological autopsy studies, have found um, that severity of prior suicidal behavior and comorbid, comorbid conditions like depression, antisocial PD, and substance use disorders elevate risk for completed suicide in this population. Um, that being said, there's much less research regarding non-suicide related mortality in patients with BPD. Um, and in the Paris study that I referenced earlier, where patients were identified by chart review and later located and reassessed, um, by the 15-year um, uh, follow-back, um, about 4.2% of the initial sample had died by what uh, the researchers defined as early death, so death by, by age 50 or earlier, not due to suicide. And by the 27-year follow-up, that number elevated to about 7.9%. Around this time, patients were, on average, about 51 years of age. Um, that being said, while this is helpful information, less is known about longitudinal patterns in deaths and um, either related to um, non-suicide mortality or suicide over time, common causes of these deaths, um, or risk factors with these particular early deaths within BPD. Um, so the objective of the present study is really to describe these phenomena in a more granular way, um, looking at 24 years of partially completed prospective follow-up um, in both patients with BPD and access to comparison subjects. Um, and describe common causes of death, other characteristics of the dissonance, and look at some predictors of both completed suicide and early deaths not due to suicide. Um, so I won't detail the participants, but the participants came from the McLean Study of Adult Development, which Dr. Zanarini detailed early, yesterday during her plenary. Um, they were all originally inpatients, were rigorously diagnosed, and um, a rigorous history was obtained for each of them. Um, and the participants have been followed and reassessed for every two years, and we're currently collecting 24-year follow-up data. Um, the final sample included at baseline 290 participants with BPD, 72 AXIS-1 comparisons. These are the socio-demographic characteristics, so mostly female, mostly white. Um, the average age at baseline was 27, average SDS, and relatively impaired GAF scores for everyone. Um, in terms of deaths, we recorded them when they were discovered um, as much as possible. We obtained the actual death certificates from the relevant vital records department. Also obtained as much information we could from obituaries and news reports about deaths if they were available, as well as informant reports. Um, so the rates overall, um, out of our 362 subjects, we've had 43 deaths, which is an overall rate of about 12%. 39% um, of those who have died have BPD, so that's over 90% of the deaths came from the BPD arm of the study, and that's an overall rate of 13.4% um, mortality for the BPD group. Of those, 5.5% committed suicide, 7.9% died due to other causes. Um, and a smaller percentage of the access to comparison subjects have died. Um, of those, one has died due to suicide and three due to other causes. Um, the average age of death across everyone was about 40, um, with a pretty big band there, um, and it was significantly younger in the BPD group.
I'll focus first on the deaths by suicides. Um, so as I said earlier, there were um, relatively fewer suicides, 17 total in the study. Um, and I'll, there was only one of those uh, was from the Access to Comparison group, and that person was 35 and male. The rest were from the BPD group. The average age of suicide was about 31, and again, mostly female, reflecting the demographics of the study. Um, in terms of the accumulation of suicides over 24 years, um, do we have a pointer on this? Oh. <laughs> Thanks. Um, you can see that the vast majority of suicides occurred in the beginning follow-up waves of the study and have been sort of dissipating over time. We've had had a few creep up in the last two waves of follow-up. At this point, it's hard to tell if that's a blip or more of an emerging trend, but we'll definitely have to follow that moving forward. Um, and in terms of methods, um, the leading cause of death due to suicides were overdoses, um, followed by hanging, maybe somewhat surprisingly, and some other idiosyncratic forms, um, including gunshot wounds and asphyxiation due to helium and things like that. Um, in terms of other cause mortality, um, again, we have a larger number of deaths due to other causes um, and slightly older average age of death in this case, um, and a slightly lower percentage of women. Three of these deaths came from the Access to Comparison groups, whereas most of them, again, came from the BPD group, with the average age of death in the BPD group being about 44.4 years, and obviously the average age for the Access to Comparisons being much older. Um, again, looking at longitudinal trends, um, you can see that um, the rate of uh, deaths due to other causes um, has kind of maintained, remained stable for a long time, but has been increasing in recent follow-up waves, which is a trend that uh, we'll again have to see if it continues, but has been somewhat alarming to us, particularly in the BPD group, um, whereas the OPD deaths have kind of remained steady. Um, and the causes of mortality, um, the most common causes are cardiovascular in nature, so um, things like heart attacks or other cardiac morbidities. Um, accidents um, also make up some of the deaths. For the most part, our research has indicated that a lot of these accidents are not due to any cause of the participant, um, so maybe being hit by a drunk driver or something like that, though a couple are ambiguous. Um, and then a host of other ailments, including cancer, um, consequences due to chronic substance use, so cirrhosis or liver disease, um, and other causes. Um, and just to kind of take a look at how these deaths accumulated over time briefly, you can see that this first line represents suicides in the Access to Comparison group, which we had the one at the first two-year follow-up, and it's remained steady. Uh, this line represents deaths due to other causes in the Access to Comparison group, which has you know, increased over time, but in a way that makes sense. Um, similarly, we can see that the largest spike in BPD suicides occurred in the um, first group of follow-ups and has sort of remained steady and has increased more recently, so we'll have to continue following that to see if that's a trend. And then finally, you can see that the rate of death due to other causes, um, causes other than suicide, has really steadily increased over time and perhaps more steeply in um, the 20 and 22-year waves. Um, so that's definitely concerning to us. Um, because of this, we wanted to see if there were some characteristics of participants that could predict these outcomes. Um, and in these cases, we looked at some predictors of completed suicide first. Um, and selected these based on literature on completed suicide and other types of disorders, including mood disorders, where there's a slightly more robust literature on this outcome, um, as well as high lethality suicide attempts in BPD and those psych like, autopsy studies that we discussed earlier. Um, these included a host of sociodemographic characteristics, a history of self-destructive behavior, past hospitalizations, um, family history of self-destructive behavior, and other psychiatric comorbidities. Um, we, because of the rarity of the outcome, we used a first penalized logistic uh, regression model to predict completed suicide using these baseline variables as predictors in the group with BPD. Unfortunately, none of the predictors were statistically significant, which I think is an interesting finding in its own, which we can talk a little bit about later. In terms of non-suicide related early deaths, um, we selected predictors that represented illness severity, um, physical health as much as we had a baseline, socioeconomic status, and other habits. 
Um, so these included things like age, sex, uh, disability status, um, substance use disorder, comorbidity, um, some indications of number of psychiatric hospitalizations, number of medications, obesity, um, so BMI over 30 or above, um, and a self-rating of the patient's quality of physical health at baseline, which was about um, sort of the most global rating at baseline we had of their physical health. Um, again, we use the same models, and in our bivariate models, basically everything uh, was predictive of this outcome except for female sex. So being of older age at baseline, having been on disability, having a history of alcohol or drug use, having a higher number of psych hospitalizations, a higher number of psych meds, being obese, and a poor rating of physical health were all related to an increased likelihood of early death. And when we looked at these in a multivariate model, um, having a history of alcohol use disorder, a greater number of psych hospitalizations, and a lower quality of, health, of physical health remained in the model as being predictors of um, increased likelihood of early death. So just to summarize briefly, um, we found that over 24 years of prospective follow-up, BPD patients were more likely to die by any cause other than their um, access to comparison subject peers. Uh, the prevalence of suicide in our sample among those with BPD was lower than some previously published estimates, but certainly within range. Um, so for instance, we had 5.5% in our study versus up to 10% in other studies, and we can certainly think about why those differences may exist. Um, generally, rates of suicide appeared to decline over time, although I've starred this because if you remember, we have that blip in recent follow-ups that we'll have to continue examining if that's um, something random or some, a more, uh, more of a trend of suicide in older age in this population. Um, and again, the early acute phase of the illness seems to be a time of greater risk, which is pretty consistent with a meta-analysis containing data from 94 completed suicides, which suggests that suicides are more common in the early phases of follow-up. Um, and again, the established predictors of completed suicide were not significant in this particular sample. In terms of the early deaths, more participants died from causes other than suicide, um, and these deaths have increased particularly in the BPD group in recent follow-up periods. Um, interestingly, we have found the same rate of um, early deaths as uh, Joel Paris did in his study, which was 7.9%. Um, and Basically, we think the differences could reflect some qualitative differences between the BPD patients in the study and others, um, either in terms of physical health or other mechanisms, um, and certainly um, we'll continue to look at that. Um, and I think perhaps most strikingly, those uh, decedents with BPD who died early due to non-suicide causes have been dying on average around 35 years earlier than current life expectancy estimates in the U.S., which are about 78.8 years, which is pretty staggering and represents the importance of this outcome. Um, and again, these deaths were most commonly due to cardiovascular morbidities, although there were a range of conditions. Um, and generally, these were predicted by a range of factors, and then the multivariate models, um, having a history of alcohol use disorder, having a number of psychiatric hospitalizations, perhaps, um, care, perhaps describing sort of the uh, severity of the person's psychiatric condition, um, and also having poorer health was related to increased likelihood. Um, and these are, again, predictors that were measured up to 25 years prior to the outcome, so they're pretty powerful. And it is consistent with um, some work done in the UK that looked at correlates of early death in um, personality disordered populations more generally based on chart review, which found that substance use um, and poor physical health earlier in life were related to increased mortality. Um, and I think really sort of the implications of this are that we're dealing with two different kinds of outcomes here. Um, and um, one that was easily predicted using our baseline data and one that wasn't. Um, so it could just reflect the distal versus pro proximal nature of risk for both of these outcomes and that um, you know, perhaps risk for completed suicide is more acute and more proximal to the actual outcome, whereas um, early death is sort of more of a slow burn outcome that we could see coming earlier based on certain characteristics. Um, and because of that, I think you know, perhaps some attention should be shifted to these things as treatment targets as much as they are mallo malleable. Um, or could influence treatment decisions. So when thinking about number of psychiatric medications or advising patients on health behaviors um, or you know, substance use, however minor. That's all I have. Thank you. <laughs>
Does anyone have any questions? Yeah. I thought Um, in this particular sample, we looked at sort of, I looked at it two ways, either number and also at aggressive polypharmacy, so having three or more psychiatric medications at baseline, um, and both cases predicted the early death regardless of the class medication, um, and so that's, that's what I looked at in this study, um, and we can certainly take a more fine-grained approach and see if one is more predictive than another in terms of increasing the likelihood. Any other questions? Yeah. So I all the very concerned asking is it three against the difference? Yeah. I think it's pretty similar to those and I think the actual gap between um, you know lifetime expectancy more generally and those in the psychiatric populations has been increasing over time. So my question was about the, the predictors. Mm -hmm. Some of them might have been really poorly. So I was yeah. talking about the number of potential medications might have been out in that necessary model mm -hmm. that the predictor Yeah. So I wanted to know who's that related to the number of populations. Mm -hmm. So like, are, are those predictors uh, near, oh, it's so similar to the linear? Right, right. Might be, might be yeah, I mean, I can definitely take a look at that. I don't know the answer off the top of my head. Um, I mean, we certainly, I'm trying to think when sort of the psych meds came out of the model, um, which I think was probably a few steps earlier than hospitalizations. Um, so, um, yeah, it may be the, the case that those two things are related. Um, but I think there's a range for both in terms of the number of medications and number of hospitalizations, and we would have to continue looking at that more. Parents cried, I cried, and the patient didn't cry. And she said, I'm really sorry I'm putting all of you through this. But her parents had hoped against hope. But they also were despairing, and they also didn't make any attempt to encourage her to stay in our residential setting. And then six months after she was discharged, and she reengaged with a totally inappropriate therapist, um, her mother called me to say that she had walked into her apartment and she had hung herself from a rafter. So that's what allowed us to know. The lack of engagement and commitment, although being extremely polite and just waiting for a time when it might hurt less for everyone else. <laughs> 